that's number one. You kind of reset your painful tender to the touch. May I also right. same shoulder length and the other. Well, hello, everybody. This is Brandy and Amir with Real Health. I am Dr. Amir Rashidi, and Brandy Rashidi is my other half. And uh, in Real Health, it's the podcast where we teach you how to feel better, get stronger, live longer, and feel younger. And uh, what we're going to do is go through some articles, uh, whatever's been in the news recently, and um, discuss those and give you our perspective from a wellness and uh, natural health standpoint. And, and, and we want to just teach them how to begin to ask these questions, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I think I think in our society, we've stopped asking. We see stuff on social oh, yeah. media yeah. and we go, that must be true, right? Yeah. But we have to dig deep. I, right. I mean, I'm so happy that we're doing these because this is adding on to our knowledge base as well and just yeah. bringing things to light that I really haven't been focusing on yeah. and I go, oh my gosh, we need to. And we're going to ask questions you may not have thought of. So so yeah. if this podcast is something that, that's been beneficial to you, please subscribe and hit the alert button so we can uh, notify you when each uh, episode comes up. And we're just going to really dig deep. You know, a lot of times you look at the headline of an article and you think you know what it's about. But when you read into oh it, there's gosh. so much in there it's that packed. that will surprise you. And also recently, we've got a presidential election coming up. Mm. Health is an issue. Health has always been an issue in, in the elections. And now we've got a candidate uh bobby kennedy rfk jr yep. who is speaking up on fda's uh corruption and they're talking about uh the uh, now listen i i'm just reporting on this so i'm not telling you um you know what you should believe and and you should certainly make your own choices but he he's revealing some information uh and data that we didn't he was recently on the megan kelly show mm -hmm. which uh i i didn't get through the whole thing it's it's a four hour interview but the parts i did listen to were um pretty eye-opening yeah. and in fact i think of all the people who have interviewed bobby kennedy megan kelly was the only one i saw that actually pushed back in a powerful way when it comes to um challenging what he's talking about and she had evidence that contradicts what he was saying which which i thought was the end if we get time for it we can certainly discuss some of but that that's how but it's supposed to be it should be like that i don't right? i don't want to be around people who always agree with me I know. it's ridiculous i mean then what am, what am i going to learn uh, and and you guys too like if you disagree with what we tell you or or um something we say that you want to inform us on something or tell us to discuss something else comment down below and just tell us just be like right. hey i think you're wrong about this and that look at this article we'll pull up suggest articles we'll pull it up We'll discuss it on the podcast. Social media, I think, has actually been something that's kept us from having these in-depth conversations yeah. in person and in a civil way, right? right? We need to be able to sit down and go, hey, this is what I read. What do you think about that? Yeah. And be able to have two different points of view right. without getting in a yeah, fight or an you argument. Know, so or... Many people, people will just say, I disagree with you and you're wrong and for I that know. reason you're a bad person and I would I don't think that's that's, that's a fact. I mean, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Sometimes we're misinformed, we could be misinformed. 100%. Sometimes we've been exposed to only half the argument not the other half. We really should discuss it. Absolutely. So let's dig, dig right in. Here's the first article. It's called Alzheimer Treatment. I'll say the drug name, forgive me if I say it wrong. Lekembi. Mm -hmm. uh, gets full FDA approval. What do you need to know? So uh, the highlights of the article are a new Alzheimer's drug, lecanemab, has received approval from federal regulators. The approval comes after the medication showed promise in slowing cognitive decline in phase three clinical trial. So I don't know how many phases there are, but I think phase three is pretty far along. Yeah. You know, that means they've done multiple trials. And and um, so uh, I don't know if this FDA, it says full FDA approval, which means I don't, I'm probably going to get become a drug and get released. Um, but it says there are uh, reports that three people died while taking the drug during the trial. Some experts have said lecanemab may simply reduce symptoms and not improve brain function. Well, when it comes to Alzheimer's, you, you know, it's it, such it, a tough disease, I, man. I, for, and, first, and there's so many people who suffer from it. I mean, yeah. you're talking about millions of people right now yeah. that are suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's. And we don't know... Yeah. As much as we know, we don't know a lot, Our right? A close friend of mine, his mother was just diagnosed with it, and he's going through a lot of um, 
stress. He's he's uh, a chiropractor down in Louisiana. You know, I used to work in a locked Alzheimer's unit. I don't That's know right. if you remember that. I that do. was pre you, um, but man, that that was that was eye opening oh, just yeah. to be there. Of course, I can imagine. So um, researchers said lecanemab slowed cognitive and functional decline by 27 percent when given to people with Alzheimer's during the clinical trial. However, the uh, journal Science reported in late December that three people died while taking the drug during the clinical trial. The journal reports that the third death was a 79-year-old Florida woman who died in mid-September after developing brain swelling and bleeding. So uh, it, it sounds a little scary, but yeah. we don't have enough information. We don't know if she had. I, I assume when they select people for these clinical trials, they screen them and make sure they don't have pre-existing issues and things like that. But um, anyways, uh, there's a lot to it. And, and just to make sure that we don't confuse anyone, uh, Lequimbi is the brand name of Lekinimab or Lecinimab, whatever the exact pronunci uh, pronunciation is. Um, so it's it's the same. The uh, Lequimbi is just the brand name of that. Um, now, I, I did find it interesting when re reading through, and I would really encourage you guys um, to to grab this article and read it um, because um, I would encourage you guys to to pull this up and read it um, because when they do these trials, they also have to have, you know, a control group and they have to do a placebo and all of that. Right. That's part of the, the whole process. And honestly, the placebo got really great results <laughs> um, at, at the up to the 18, 18 month mark, I believe it was. So it, can you explain what a placebo is for the, some individuals who may not understand what that is? Yeah, bottom line, placebo is a fake drug. It's usually a sugar pill or salt pill. It's probably sugar uh, pill that they take. They tell them this drug may have a positive effect on you. They're not telling them that it's a fake drug. They, they just say, hey, this may or may not be the real drug. We want to give it to you and see if we get positive results. In fact, Harvard University School of Public Health and uh, I, I believe School of Public Health and Medical School uh, have done has done a lot of research on placebo, and uh, they've published a lot of positive information. In fact, there was a chiropractor who passed away a few years ago. His name was Fred Bartsch. He mm -hmm. said the placebo is the only drug that has withstood the test of time. <laughs> No side effects <laughs> whatsoever, and yet it seems to work. It works. Yeah. So Harvard uh, uh, Medical School proved that it works, and so they, they've done multiple studies. The last study they did, they actually told the patient that this is a placebo. So they said, we're giving you a sugar pill, but in some cases, it's been shown to have a positive effect on people. So the pe person taking it knew it's a fake pill. It's a sugar pill and it's not going to have any effect on it. And they still got a significant clinically relevant positive result from that, even when the patient knew it was a placebo. So I wish we had an article that would we could put with this that talked about the mind-body connection. I think we're going to have to find one. So we're going to ask Sean to help us do that, be really okay. scouring because... Sean is our producer. Sean's great. So, yeah. um, so we, I, I really want to bring that to people's attention because that seems to be something that's just profound that most of us don't really think about. We yeah. don't take into account that mind-body right. connection. Now, they do say in this clinical trial, it said that the recent clinical trial was conducted at 235 sites in North America, Asia, and Europe between uh, March of 2019 and March of 2021. So we all know what was going on around that time too. So so I'm just going to say that um, the study involved nearly 1800 adults, 50 to 90. All participants had some form of early dementia or Alzheimer's. Half of the participants were given uh, laconimab or lacenimab and the other half were given the placebo. Uh, researchers reported that there was a significant difference um, between uh, lacenimab and placebo at the 12 uh, at 12 months. But at 18 months, it appeared the people taking uh, lacenimab had uh, some clearance of amyloid and less uh, cognitive decline. The challenge is they still don't know if that's really what is causing the issues uh, and the progression with Alzheimer's. They think that it has to do with that, right? Yep. And they're hoping removing those can create a better connection in you know the yeah. synapses in the brain. Um, the drug is actually a monoclonal antibody that that's 
uh, given through infusion therapy. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, infusion therapy has been used now with uh, immunotherapy uh, for cancers and mm-hmm. so on. We've gotten good results with that as well. So being an it's, it's an antibody, I, I believe it targets the, the plaques in the brain. They're called beta amyloid plaques. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't see those on any type of imaging. You can only see it on an autopsy after an Alzheimer's patient passes away. So that's why Alzheimer's is difficult to diagnose. And treat, right? And, and treat. Now, here's what we know about beta amyloid plaques is people who don't sleep well develop a lot of beta amyloid plaques. Well, we, we've we talked a little bit in, in prior podcasts about the importance of sleep and how... Deep REM sleep. Yeah, how that's so important to health. So it 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 even affects this. I mean, the brain yeah. health, the brain is so complicated. It's such an amazing yeah. machine. Yeah. And we just, I don't think we give it the nutrients and the right. food and, and, and there, the care there, that it there's needs. There's a great book called Why We Sleep. I think Matthew Walker is the author. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, uh, it's called Why We Sleep. And he talks about the research that shows that dreaming at night is what detoxifies the brain of these beta amyloid plaques. Right. Now I I think I I could be wrong. Um, correct me if you if you read this as well. But I do think that this was one of the um, trials that was given like the expediency of kind of being pushed through. There's not as many trials and as many years that were required for this because there's only one other drug that was put on the market that is supposed to treat. Um, Alzheimer's, which I think it came out, I want to say in like 2019, um, I'll have to go back and look. Um, but there was one other drug that did come out, um, and they do function very similarly. However, um, they don't believe the other drug has as many, um, intense side effects as what we've seen in the trials with, Mm. uh, with this drug, which is a little disconcerting. Um, now they are saying that already Medicare has decided to cover majority of the cost of this drug. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're assuming that patients will then be responsible right. for the 20% and they're going to cover 80%. And some of these medications, they're astronomical in cost. Astronomical. So I'd now, be interested now, to see what just, that is. D- d- don't quote me on this, but but in the past when I've studied things like how a drug gets approved and so on. I know that unfortunately, it, it's not a third party that does the research mm-hmm. and the clinical trials, it's the developers of the drug. And the FDA requires po- three positive trials initially to start the approval process. Now, that doesn't mean three consecutive positive trials. Correct. That doesn't mean that they just need to have, they need to do three and all three need to be positive. They could have done a hundred trials yeah. And 97 of them. 97 of them could be negative results. And like three horrific. would show positive and they would only submit those three. They won't show yeah. the other 97. Obviously, it's unfortunately, it's it's a for-profit institution mm-hmm. uh, and, and their goal is to get it approved. And also, they pay a lot of money to the FDA to do this. So the FDA also benefits from looking at these and and doing these clinical trials uh so you know you, you really have to be careful personally this is my personal opinion uh it, i'm not speaking as a doctor mm-hmm. at this point right now i'm just saying i personally would like to wait five years before i try any yeah. drug uh, because the the ultimate test is when it's out in the market and there's been yeah. plenty of drugs you can look this up where they it was approved and released and then four or five years later, it was pulled from the market. Yes, there are there are many. Now let me let me go ahead and just touch on this too. Some hesitation uh, about uh, uh, lisinimab. I think I say it different every time I say it. So um, they were granted breakthrough therapy designation by the FDA in June of 2021. This status um, is designed to speed up the development of new drugs, uh, which is what you're saying um, that will address medical needs and currently unmet. Uh, that are currently unmet for serious or life-threatening conditions. However, some scientists have expressed concern that the earlier phase two trials had flaws and that uh, the actual benefit of the drug um, to people could be limited. Mm. The phase 2B lisinimab uh, studies were fatally flawed 
can we just say that again? We're fatally flawed mm. because the high dose versus placebo analysis that were uh, supposedly that supposedly showed some clinical benefit were profoundly compromised. So, and this was from Dr. Uh, Michael uh, Gracius, um, a professor of neuro neurology and neurologic sciences at Stanford. So that's what he says. Um, so there's definitely some, some issues. There's definitely some concerns about this drug. It's been released. Insurance is going to pay for it. I know with an Alzheimer's diagnosis, you're grasping because yeah. you're losing your loved one so quickly sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what we would, you know, placed in that situation. It's hard. Five yeah. years, waiting five years for something like that. Right. Five not, years not could when be. when your loved one is suffering and this is the only drug available out there. And exactly. Also, if it's the only treatment that's approved by insurance and uh, yeah, so I'm not going to tell you what to do or not to do. But uh, I will say there are other things holistically that you can do to always improve brain function in anyone. And um, so making sure that there are things that are feeding the brain well, yeah. supplementation, I'll you, food. I'll give you three big ones. Fish oil. Well, yeah, supplementation it would be like the fourth one. But number one is sleep, mm -hmm. proper sleep, not medically induced sleep. Right. Sleep aids prevent deep REM sleep. So you, so you sleep through the night, but you don't deep REM and you don't dream, which the beta amyloid plaques don't get cleared out. Right. Sleep, powerful deep sleep, number one. Second one is exercise very very important you exercise once it could be as easy as 30 minutes of brisk walking every day and then once a week you lift some weights for 15 minutes you know right. 20 minutes and then the third one just as important is sugar sugar does affect brain function in a terrible way insulin fluctuations if you have uh, abnormal sugar handling, you have to figure it out. Even if it means you go on a ketogenic diet temporarily to clear out things and then start to reintroduce carbohydrates slowly. I don't think we should go without carbohydrates permanently or indefinitely. I know experts, there are some experts who say you could stay on a ketogenic diet for the rest of your life. Personally, I don't believe that and I don't like it. I think carbohydrates, the reason it has hydrate after it is because one of the things carbohydrates do is it helps pull water into your muscles and right. tissues. And so I, I really think um, those three are the main ones. And then obviously there's fish oil. There's a uh, fish oil is uh, omega-3s are divided into EPA and DHA. DHA uh, in fish oil. So, so if you're concerned about brain health, DHA, a fish oil that's high in DHA reduces brain inflammation. Yeah. So, so that's absolutely a, a great one. So that would be number four. So those four things, yeah. uh, I highly recommend they're safe. Exercise is safe. And they don't cost you anything. Sleep is safe. You know? And reducing sugar is safe. Stop eating pastry. If you're worried about dementia, literally there were talks, <clears throat> and I don't know where this went. They were going to do this by the year 2020, and, and, and I never heard anything else about it, but there were articles that said they were going to rename dementia and call it type 3 diabetes. So, wow. Uh, b because that's how much blood sugar fluctuations affect brain function. Well, there's so much out there. Like, so our our kids were off at VBS this week. I know this is a little side note. They're off at VBS. They came back. My middle son, who's super sensitive to a lot of, you know, foods and, and things like that. He's my middle son too. Yes. Oh, for the record. Um, and he was not so off the chart. I looked at him like, what the heck did you eat today? Like, what, what was it? Come to find out he had had um, a little bit of sugar, but he'd had like this kool-aid drink that had um and i i should maybe i shouldn't have said that he had this sugary drink which had red dye in it and he's like i didn't drink that much i drank like half um he acted like so spastic and i was like you cannot have this stuff do not ever put that in your body again because you can't even function you can't carry on a conversation yeah. he couldn't recall he couldn't he couldn't keep his body still yeah. uh, Literally, it was unbelievable. He, he went from a normal kid to being ADHD. Like extreme. And, and so that's that's what sugar does. That's what some of these dyes do yeah. and so on. So just be super careful. Uh, you know, when it comes to clinical trials, I, I just remembered uh, when uh, RFK Jr. was being interviewed by Megyn Kelly, they went back and talked about how FDA approved the AZT drug for AIDS. 
and and he he said and this is public record now so everyone knows you can look this up and in fact megan kelly on the side uh validated his claims looked it up actually went to the public records looked it up and so the, the reason because azt they found killed more people than aids did a aids wasn't killing people the AZT drug, and it's an anti-cancer drug, but it was such a powerful anti-cancer drug that was killing all the cells of the body, and it was killing people, so they shelved it. But then when AIDS became an epi quote-unquote epidemic, they brought it back out, and they said, this will help, and that ended up killing people. One of the ways they got it to pass through the FDA was during the clinical trials, they were giving the subjects blood transfusions. And when they give them a blood transfusion, they would, it would invigorate them, and they'd feel better. So, but the drug was really hurting them. So, so it, it, the FDA approved it, seeing that, oh, these people actually showed improvement. They didn't know, maybe they didn't know, maybe they knew, I don't know, but the drug blood transfusions is what made them survive the trial yeah. time. Otherwise they, they would have all died yeah. from the drug. Let's move on. Um, we, well, speaking of toxins. Yep. Okay, um, so I'm gonna apologize right off the bat um, I have some very, uh, some people I love dearly and they're in the dental industry and, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, hot topic for some, which is fluoride and other, um, like PFASs that are in our drinking water and in everything. I'm a little freaked out after reading this article. Can I just tell you, this was from us news. Um, the article, uh, his name is nearly half of tap water. Uh, American drink is tainted with PFASs, forever chemicals. So I had to do a little bit of research um, just to just to kind of make this a little easier to understand. Um, PFAS is explained. This is from uh, from the EPA website. It says the EPA is committed to providing meaningful and understandable and actionable information. Here we go. Um, uh, can I can we say because you mentioned fluoride and then you said. PFAS, which are different, which which PFAS stands for polyfluorinated alkyl substances. Gotcha. Continue. OK, so um, so here is what the EPA has learned so far. PFASs are widely used, long lasting chemicals, components of which break down very slowly over time. Because of their widespread use and persistence in the environment, many PFASs found in the blood of people and animals all over the world and are present at, lo at low levels in a variety of food products and the environment. Um, I would like to know and have people quantify for me what low levels are. Because to me, when I'm reading how dangerous PFASs are, you don't want it at any level, even low, even low doses. PFAS, uh, PFAS um, products are found in water, air, fish, and soil at locations across the nation and the globe. Scientific studies have shown that exposure to some PFASs in the environment may be linked to harmful health effects in uh, health and in humans and animals. There are thousands of PFAS uh, chemicals and they are found in many different consumer and commercial and industrial products. This makes it challenging to study and assess um, the potential human health and environmental effects. It's even in carpet and clothing. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. So, so the carpet that we purchase to put in our homes that we allow our children and our infants to crawl on, nuts. I'm I'm not happy about this. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know one of the things it does is it, it causes hormone suppression, which um, I, I've looked at a lot in men. They say that the average man today has maybe half the testosterone levels than a man did a hundred years ago. The average man, there's like across the board, we have half the testosterone we had it a hundred years ago. And women, most generally we the amount of estrogen that we should ever take into our body would mm -hmm. fit on the back of our thumbnail but food that we eat um birth control pills ugh, all of this elevates our estrogen yep. so greatly which well, is our stressor hormone and women need to have testosterone as well and and reduced testosterone in women is very detrimental as well yeah i mean here we have an astronomical rate of infertility and cancers and all yeah. of these things and i've never been one that i go that's so surprising because we know the toxic load that yeah. that most of us have 
But I, I will say, even as much as I feel like we know, I was like, I'm so in the dark. Yeah. And now I'm well, a little more freaked. It's so amazing. I mean, it's it's a list of the top killers. Is the P P F P F A S is uh, cause cancer, mm -hmm. big, one of the biggest Huge. killers. Heart disease, uh, which is obesity and cholesterol increase. Thyroid disease. Uh, liver liver damage. damage. Yeah. Hormone suppression. Fertility. I mean, fertility centers are popping up everywhere. It's like one of the biggest industries, billions of dollars being spent on fertility. Yeah. It used to be people were worried about not getting pregnant, you, you know, and it, now people can't get pregnant. Yeah. So um, it says there's been almost no place scientists have looked where they have not found PFAS, uh, uh, says toxicologist uh, Jamie DeWitt. Um, so that's what he told CNN. Uh, or she told CNN, uh, she's a professor of pharmacology and toxicology at East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina. Um, to gauge the impact on drinking water, a team led by uh, Kelly Smalling of USGS used water samples collected between 2016 and 2021 from 269, this made me so sad, private wells and 447 uh, public sources. Their models suggest over 45% of U.S. drinking water samples have at least one PFAS chemical um, and let's see uh, developed by the USGS um, can also test for 32 compounds out of the 12,000 that exist. So we have over 12,000 PFASs that exist in the world. We can't test for majority of them. Mm. I mean they're talking about we can only we can only test for like 32 compounds out of 12 thousand not 1200 12,000 yeah so and here's what got me and this is what made me say this freaked me out or made me a little nervous is that this is not just public water we already know that they infuse the water with things we know that um you know people flushing you know pharmaceuticals down the toilet other things to get into the the drinking water right and then we add fluoride, right? Which I did learn in some of these articles is not the same fluoride that they use in the dental industry. In the dental industry, that fluoride is actually not that I think it makes it much better, but it's actually treated, it's um, manufactured differently. This is like raw fluoride. Well, wh where does fluoride come from? Well, one of the reasons they got into the environment was during the um, developing of the nuclear bomb. Yeah. Uh, what was it, the Manhattan Project? It, it, a lot of fluoride got into the water, and, and right afterwards, they said, fluoride's good for you. Yeah. And it even says these chemicals are dangerous even at much lower levels than scientists previously knew. Uh, and that's what the EPA said in June of 22. So just last year, they're like, yeah, we didn't think it was nearly as bad. Low doses, also bad. But then let's talk about this, because is it legal? It sure is in Maryland. Actually, majority of the states right now, it's still legal to for manufacturers to be using PFASs, for them to be putting it in the carpets or using the chemical compounds to make that. There's only about five, five or six states that have even begun to outlaw that, which is crazy. So we know it's a detriment to our health. Like, we know it's killing people. I think I saw it. Did you mention this already? 98% of people have some type of PFASs in their body. That was that was somewhere in the article. Yeah. I, uh, yep. Yep. It's right here. Just... Ninety-eight. Yeah. About ninety-eight percent of people are believed to have PFAS chemicals in their systems. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I, that was really, really concerning to me. Um. So. Especially that it's in well water. Yeah, it's in well water because of runoff and yeah. you know things are being put into the air. You know, I worked at NIH, uh, Building Ten of NIH for two years. This is before nine eleven and before all the security and everything. I, you could just drive right underneath the building and park in the garage. But so I I was an intern for two years um, during my junior and senior years in college at George Washington University, and so during my internship when I was there. One day they said, do not drink from the water fountain. All the water in building 10 is radioactive. They found because they have this Geiger, Geiger counter. They were testing that everything was ra <laughs> everything was radio. Like, how did radioactive water show up in the entire building? Well, it turned out that they had 
cancer patients, the building 10 is the clinical building. Oh, so, yeah. so they had cancer patients who were undergoing uh, radiation therapy. When they urinated in the water, their urine was radioactive. And somehow it got into the drinking water as well, which is really disturbing. And it, it, this is a high security, you know, clean government facility, National Institutes of Health. It's NIH. And it, we were doing uh, clinical uh, research there at the time. So. So, yeah. And this is not hidden information. If you just look up, do a, a cursory search on yeah. PFASs. You're going to all of this information we got, um, you know, outside of the U.S. News uh, article that we were reading through. I got from like the EPA and, you know, other reputable sites. So let me just say this. I, I found this really interesting. There was a website um, in a, a group. I believe they're a nonprofit called Safer States. And so this is a group who is working towards getting more laws in place in various states. Um, and so there's a couple states, only six states um, have actually uh, banned um, PFASs in upholstered furniture and textiles and things like that. Um, California, Colorado, um, let's see. Oh, Maryland, we do have. Um, so they're listed New York. Um, and Vermont. Those have all um, mm. adopted some of those restrictions for uh, PFASs in carpets, rugs, and aftermarket textile treatments. So that's fantastic. That doesn't mean those states don't have them. It just means if, if, if right. you imported your furniture from Correct. another state, it probably has it. So yes, I guess buy your furniture manufactured in those states. But that, that's just one thing exactly that, so that, that's not water so. yes exactly so so you know the good news is maryland does have a few we're like heading yep. to trying to pull some of these things so go to safer states read up on this you can yep. see what minnesota is doing and also, they're doing amazing stuff. get a nice carbon filter for your water yes um so there's there are things you can do you can be making sure that um, your drinking water is safe so we are on well but we still have a, our our berkey i love my uh, my Berkey uh, water filter, my water tastes amazing through that, yeah. and it takes out uh, a lot of contaminants. Reverse osmosis is another type. It's more expensive, but it's a great way to make sure water is clean. Or at least be using a carbon filter and a fluoride yeah. filter. Um, but I will tell you, there is one site which um, we've used um, for many years, and they have grown so tremendously. Again, this is a nonprofit. They are not, they don't stand to gain anything from taking one side it's or basically another. basically public service. Yeah, so um, ewg.org is a great resource. Um, they actually have, they have a tap water database. Um, I won't talk about it, but I did look up Frederick's. Mm. Um, let's just say every household, even if you are on city water, especially if you're on city water, you should be doing something with your water. Mm. It It's, um, there are contaminants um, detected um 21 total contaminants nine exceed the ewg health guidelines um they have a whole section to help you pick out the best filter for what's in your water you can see everything that's actually in the water what was the website again um it's ewg.org so ewg.org has you can go through and see every single chemical that's in all of our household cosmetics household cleaners I was blown away when I first started using this site and we took out so many toxic things out of our household just Even to suntan lotion. If it's summertime, you're spending time by the oh pool my gosh. Or at the beach. There's you know? so few that actually are not carcinogenic. Whatever product you're using, go to this website, look it up, see if there's, there's problems in it. Um, the, the, a book came out years ago, 20 years ago. Now, I think it was a, it's called dark deception that, that showed that certain sunscreens, cause more skin cancer than the sun right yeah so that, that that's disturbing also yeah we are running out of time we, we are we were way past uh but this was interesting we were going to talk about marijuana being legalized in maryland there's over 20 other states uh but maryland just got legalized marijuana and um so um we didn't get to talk about that too much but th there isn't a whole lot to talk about you have to be 21 and and uh you can only buy a certain amount if you own too much you can grow two plants Oh, I home. did not see yeah, that. Yeah, it says you can grow on, on your property two marijuana plants 
but no more than two. It, two more than two is they, they come and arrest the third plant. If <laughs> if you grow three <laughs> three plants, and and I, I guess they 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 watch you with satellite to make sure you only have two plants. I don't know. Um, do you, so can you imagine, do you know how many dispensaries there are? It says, according to Maryland Cannabis Administration, 94 dispensaries that had already been opened up for medical use have paid the one-time conversion fee to sell for adult use on Saturday. Mm. So that means at least 94 exist in Maryland, which is yeah. which is nuts. What, so. what, what I found interesting also is that they, they, they are obligated by law to set aside a certain amount of marijuana for people who need it for medical purposes. Correct. And so, higher doses too. Yeah. So so if you are just a regular adult without a medical cannabis card, yeah. you cannot get the highest dosing stuff. That has to be set right. aside for medical. They're saying down the road they may release that to the general public, but right now they have to give priority of that to medical card holders. And then they also have to do something else to make sure that the medical card holders can actually get their product. Right. So they have to have certain amounts set aside or special They're thinking lines about or having like times. a drive through lane just for just yeah. for people with medical. What's what what I thought was was funny is that you, you can get lollipops, gummies, milkshakes, cookies. It didn't list brownies. I you know in the old <laughs> I'm days sure it, was, there. <laughs> it was all brownies. It was but chocolate, sodas, oils, creams, vapes, waxes, tinctures, dermal patches, salves, and even suppositories. You know, it's it's such a hot topic, and I know we have to get off. We should pick this up another time because- You wanna talk about weed? We should talk about weed. Okay. I, I mean, we, we kind of have to. Okay. There's such a, I mean, we all have certain thoughts and feelings yep. about it, especially depending on our age. Um, and then uh, those of younger ages have a very different thought process. We know that there are some benefits medically, yep. you know, to certain disease processes and reducing inflammation. But we also know that there's a cognitive uh, challenge, right, that also comes along with it. And so I, I think it's something that we need to unpack because it's a huge thing in Maryland okay. right now. So, Sean, pull some weed articles for us. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> well, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. We, we're, we're grateful that you're uh, watching and listening. Uh, yeah. Please share. Please subscribe. Please comment. Um, let us know this is helping you. And uh, we'll keep it going. So we appreciate you. Love you. God bless you. And this is Real Health with Brandy and Amir. Take care. Have a great one.